Geek Fest. We are so happy you here I go. Now the recording is starting. Welcome to the Mini Geek Fest, everybody. We've got a small but mighty group tonight. We have a tendency to see people come in and out throughout the evening. Um, and when I say it's small but mighty, I mean it. The guests we have tonight, the, in particular Karen Mensing and Mike Fisher, what an honor to have them joining us. Very briefly, Mini Geek Fest, we get together, we share Web 2.0 resources at almost the 50,000 foot view. It's enough, hi Kim, it's enough to give that proverbial, proverbial potato chip where you're going to want to go out hopefully and learn more. So I'm going to go through these slides rather rapidly. Um, I think most of you are probably somewhat comfortable. Karen, I know we walked through it. Kim is a pro at this. Mike, I know you know it, so we're going to zip through it. And But we do need to have everybody go ahead and go ahead in the toolbar, grab one of the, the little star, and go ahead and put it on the map where you're from. So can you guys join us and do that? Over in the toolbar on the left-hand side, grab the star. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see that Peggy and I are there in, in Arizona, or maybe Karen. Mike, we need to have you posted on the East Coast for us. There he is. Kim from Texas. Kim's probably just getting in there, so I'm going to be rude and put Kim's in for her for Texas. She probably just did that, so now we have two Kim's. This is always the fun part. I wish I wish we were able to show all this to every time that we do this. So let's go ahead and forge ahead because we've got to get Mike on there. Peggy, I think we're going to go ahead and skip our survey that we do here because we do definitely want to get into these things. So welcome to the Mini Geek Fest. And as Peggy mentioned before, we do have our resources available on a, um, a Glogster. And Peggy always goes in and adds more that we get from the media or from the show. And Peggy, if it's OK, can we go ahead and dive in and have Mike share his with us right away because we are excited about it. Absolutely, Kim. Let's take advantage of this time. And uh, then we'll come back to our sharing. Well, thank you so much for having me. I know I just kind of jumped in here at the last minute. But you know what? This is the way the web works now. And anytime, on time, 24-7, whatever it is, I think now it's just that's the appropriate way to work. So um, I'm going to start by uh, sharing my screen and looking at the resources uh, for this evening. Uh, that are in the live binder in the Mini Geek Fest links. So I'm also going to drop that link. I know it's already been dropped in the um, chat area, but um, I'm also going to share that here as well. So hopefully everybody can see the page here. I want to share just a couple of things. There's a couple of things um, related to me that are already in the live binder. One of them is around the leveraging the web for the Common Core that we did for live binders. Uh, not too long ago, and what this website, uh, what what we did here, was talk about content curation, um, and the idea that um, students are using the web in multiple ways now, but are they using it for like specific learning? And we were exploring the idea of these Common Core capacities, and I believe they're on page five or page seven of the Common Core document, the College and Career Readiness capacities. And one of them is around technology and um, using it strategically, um, using digital media strategically and capably. And when we talk about content curation, it's not just about the collection of information. It's about the um, purposeful, like, I don't know, the, the shrinking of information down to the core elements that are really going to make a difference for learning. We can collect all that we're going to collect, but we need to um, weed out what we don't need and be purposeful and relevant to whatever the learning task is. So that's what we did here with this particular webinar that this live binder represents. <coughs> and I've given you several tools here uh, to look at curation and, and what it means in terms of the Common Core, because I do a lot of work with um, with the Common Core around the country, specifically in New York State. And these are the kinds of things that I'm sharing with teachers. Kim? Mike, yeah, can we ask you to go ahead and click on the follow me to the right of the link? Because we're not, we're not getting it on our screen. Some of us aren't. OK. Does that work better now? And I'm not sure if we need to do a refresh, but since you checked it, um, I'll wait to see what Peggy says. Let's see. I will. Let's change the link, and I'll go back in. How's that?
I'm not seeing anything right now, but I'm not sure if that if I'm the one that's having the. There we go. Okay, I'm going to change this again. See how quick and adept he is. My goodness, how <laughs> oh gracious! And you click How's the follow. That? You there you go. Now, did you check the follow me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's go for it. Thank you, Mike. Okay. There we go. All right. So I'm I'm in the live binder here. It's the one that says Common Core Live Binder, and this one is about content curation. And I'm actually going to jump into uh, something around curation here in just a moment. But I'm going to switch over to the other tab here, the 12 Common Core Considerations. This actually came out of a college that I was working with. Um, Kim, did you, have, did you need something else? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were jumping in to <laughs> ask another question. I'm sorry. Um, this Common Core Considerations came up from a university that I was working with that has pre-service teachers. And I've been doing some work with them. It's Niagara University um, here outside of just north of Buffalo. And I go in and work with their pre-service teachers and their faculty on integrating the Common Core into their, their professional practice now as they're learning to become teachers and go ahead and get them set up in the right way so that when they get out into the field, um, you know, they're prepared. So that's what this was, but it was around the 12 days of Christmas, but so that it was relevant for um, an audience after Christmas, I changed it to 12 Common Core Considerations. So that's what you're looking at here. And there's a lot of information uh, in this binder um, around things that are going on nationally around the Common Core. And just 12 of the things that kind of come up everywhere I work, uh, questions that teachers have, resources that they need. And I put them together in terms of these 12 things to look at. So. What I'm going to do is actually jump out of Live Binders now and come back to uh, just one specific tool called Pinterest. I'm sure some of you have heard of it before. Uh, this is my personal Pinterest page with all of my boards. And I'm going to drop that into the chat right here, too, so you can all visit it um, if you'd like to separately. Um, Kim said it's her latest addiction, and I, it, I think it's mine, too, even though the research is saying that men aren't using it, but I think that that's a lie, um, <clears throat> because I'm, I'm now on it every day, and I'm finding all kinds of stuff, and I'm curating my own sort of visual museums of, of information that I think is important to share with uh, teachers. Um, specifically, uh, I'm going to look at the best of Common Core resources uh, that I've put together here. And this represents things that I've either found or created around the Common Core uh, for teachers. And when I go out and work with them, this is one of the first places I come to. And I say, if you haven't looked at these resources, these are some of the ones that you may want to consider looking at, um, including uh, this link here for the uh, unpacked standards from North Carolina. They've taken every single Common Core standard and unpacked it. And I'm not seeing it come up. So let's see if I can hit the, if I can go back. Um, let me try it again. When you navigate Pinterest in the regular feed, you should get a pop-up window. But I'm not sure if being inside Blackboard, if it's just stopping it. But it's the unpacked CCSS standards from North Carolina Department of Education. What they've done is taken every single Common Core standard and done the breakdown, done the unpacking, the whole Larry Ainsworth, like let's take this apart and look at the nouns and the verbs. And then they also translate it into actionable statements. So if you're doing curriculum mapping or if you're doing curriculum planning um, or curriculum design around the Common Core standards, it's a really good place to start with teachers who are already overwhelmed at the amount of change that's coming. So. <coughs> Uh, so Kim's writing, did you see the article on HuffPost about Common Core lesson plans being a waste and not following best practice? I didn't see that, but I will tell you that a lot of the work that we're doing is, hmm, what's the nicest way to say this, um, a scaffold. <laughs> um, teachers can't go from 0 to 60 in one fell swoop just because the government would like for them to. Um, and so one of the things that is is a better idea is to introduce them to design elements that they may not have considered before and start getting them to what uh, Janet Hale and I call this zone of transformation and moving from conforming to transforming. And during that process, we move from things that are more teacher-centered all the way up to things that are more student-centered and <coughs> focus on 
the key thing, if we were to boil down the common core to one key idea, one key thing, it's going to be the word thinking. And that's a big shift for a lot of teachers because they believe that that one thing is content. And the content is moot if the kids aren't thinking about it. So that's what curriculum design is, whether it's a lesson plan, which I really don't advocate for anymore. I like lessons, plans, or lesson experiences that are not time dependent. But um, when we think about unit planning and we think about um, you know, what, what it is we're trying to get our kids to, what do they need to know and be able to do? It's not a worksheet. It's not computer lab time on Thursday. It's deep thinking. And these are my resources for getting there, including, um, I don't know what the Huffington Post said. And well, that's not going to come up either. Um, but on here, it, one of my posts is called, a, I wrote a blog post on unit appraisal. I'm asking teachers to be clear. So I want them to have clarity in what they're writing. I want them to um, have lively instruction. I want them to provide evidence that their kids are learning something. I want there to be alignment between the standards, the assessments, the skills, the content. Um, and I want there to be rigorous instruction. I want it to be robust. I want it to be hearty and meaty. So you can read the blog post there. I'm having some trouble clicking around on this inside Blackboard, but there's tons of stuff here for, for you to explore. Um, so maybe it is just slow loading, you mean. Um, <laughs> Kim, professionalism. Um, I said to a, a parent today, um, I was talking to a group of people in a, a parent was explaining her situation with her son, who's a seventh grade student and having trouble in math. And the teacher is very uh, traditional, and the kid's having trouble. He's not learning in this sort of linear progression that the teacher is expecting. And what the Common Core is asking is not necessarily that we engage that linear progression anymore. We need to dig deep. We need to go a mile wide and, I'm sorry, a mile deep and an inch wide. Um, and focus on not just the destination, but the multiple journeys that get us to that destination. And possibly cutting the things that, that are comfortable for us and moving in the direction of um, creating opportunities and creating engagement and motivation for these students. Um, one of the things here in Buffalo that's been in the news is attendance. And the teachers are up in arms about it, of course. The county's up in arms about it. The, the state government is up in arms about it. And funding um, is, is questionable right now. But the kids are bored. And if they're bored, well, I don't think that we have to be circus performers. We don't have to entertain the kids. We, need, we do need to be aware that these are 21st century kids. They're being educated with a 19th century structure and a 20th century curriculum. And if we don't up our game, it's over. So. I see people mentioning the, the iBook right now. Uh, the Apple Store and I are having some conversations. And the book right now currently is not on the Apple Store. But it is on my website, digigaji.com. Um, and it's half price, actually, right now while we figure out what's going on with Apple. So you can download it right from my web, website down to your device without going to the Apple Store. Um, and as soon as it's back up on the Apple Store, then I'll take it back off my website and just route everything through Apple. So I'm going to stop now and relinquish control. I wanted to pop in here for a few minutes and uh, be a part of this. So I really thank you for letting me come in. And um, I'll stick around for a few minutes if anybody has any questions. I think I speak for everybody. When I can't write fast enough, I can't keep enough <laughs> bookmarks going. Mike, this has just been so eye-opening. And I have to say, for Pinterest, it. I'm not big on Twitter. I don't do it much. But Pinterest is the visual museum or visual whatever you refer to it at. That sticks with me. That resounds with me because I'm very visual. I will be repinning what you're doing. Thank you so much. This is awesome. And I think everybody goes, woo <laughs> as we're doing this. So thank you so much. OK. Thank Before you. Thank I you go, for having me. Let, wait, before you go, Mike, let's see if there's any questions. You can either raise your hand if you have a question, or you can type it into the chat. We got a woo-woo. OK. -woo. okay. <laughs> thank you, Carolyn. OK. At this point, I think we'll probably let you go, Mike. Um, best, of, best of luck on your new child. When does your <laughs> wife do? 
Um, she's due October 2nd, but I bought my Madonna tickets for September 12th, so I think that's the new due date. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm gonna, composure, composure. Mike, thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. You You're welcome. It. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, what a hard act to follow, you guys. Um, welcome to everybody that has joined us. We appreciate it so much. I'm going to keep mine relatively simple on the first one, guys. It's They Don't Teach You This in School. Came across it. What it is is a series of videos that people are posting. It started by a young man in New Zealand, or he looks young, but once you hit 50, everybody looks young. Um, and it's a library of life, life lessons and advice, and one of them it says the people are stupid, so of course it drew my attention. It's people from all professions, and you can go in and you can do a search. You can see the different um, areas here for business, careers, education. There's not a lot in it right now. I'm, I, I'm going to follow this to see if there's, um, it starts to build some. So I think there might be some that t teachers can attach to and maybe show their students. So check it out. It's they don't teach you this in school. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Peggy. Let's go ahead and head off to our next one here. This is one that has the cute factor. And as I say, um, I'm somewhere in my notes, I made the comment, I think it's on the wiki, that you shouldn't go for the cute factor. But guys, this is just so darn cute. And I'm not going to take a lot of time. You can see this yourself. Um, you No login required. It's easy to use. And as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here, you can either have it say the sound, the sound of the animal, and um, or the, the the animal itself say the word alligator. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's definitely only got the kindergarten factor there. But what I like is you can go ahead and you can do flashcards. You can do a poster, and then you can use their alphabet like the Mini Geek Fest. And I could put that on a T-shirt or a coffee mug, and for every article purchased through them, they buy a book in, um, for children in Africa. So I just think it's got a cute fact to check it out. Like I said, flashcards, coloring pages, wall poster, and of course, I had to make a little um, t-shirt with my grandson's name on it because that's what grandparents do. We spend money on completely useless things because we can. Okay, so I hope everybody will give it a try and check it out. Um, wait a minute, Mike said related iPad app. Mike, is this related to the um, the Alphabet animals? Not not to this site specifically, but okay. another one that came around about like the alphabet and the kids like interacting with it. And uh, it was a company that contacted me today, and we played with it all afternoon. So How just thought fun. I'd share that. So okay. a little more geekiness. There you go. And Peggy, I'm saying this out loud. Cool iPad app because Peggy knows how I feel. I'm kind of a droid person. So we're going on to the next one now. Um, I'm going to shut up here in just a minute, but Adam Bello rocks the house. I got to meet him last year thanks to Peggy. I am a follower of, a follower of his. I have used some of his webinars for professional development in Madison, and with that being said, I'm going to shut up. Peggy, it's all yours. <laughs> You're so funny. And uh, I thought you were going to take my thunder and say everything I was going to say about Adam. <laughs> Because we both think he rocks, and he does so many amazing things for teachers. But I got to participate in his uh, recent ISTE webinar, I think it was just last week, called More Cool Tools for Teachers. And Kim, if you're able, could you drop the link into this while I'm talking about it? What he did was he created a symbolu just for that webinar. And all of the sites that he shared and talked about during the webinar are in this symbolu. So you can access all of them just with this one link. And uh, he just shared some wonderful tools. And you know how great he is at creating those little short video um, clips that in less than five minutes tell you everything you need to know about the app or the tool to be able to get started with it. He's just such a great resource. So I wanted to share that as one of my links tonight. And Kim has posted the link there. And the next one was one that he shared in that webinar, which is one that I actually learned about from Kim Case quite some time ago. And 
I wanted to include it specifically because I know a lot of you are used to using Poll Everywhere. And Mentimeter does the same thing. It's a polling tool, totally free. You don't have to register for it. And the great thing about it is that you can get up to 200 participants in a poll, whereas with Poll Everywhere, if you're using their free version, you can only get 30 people. So if you're part of an audience that's a very big audience at a conference, and you're number 31, your vote doesn't get counted. So I love this resource, and I want you to uh, check it out. Uh, I love the fact that you don't have to install or download anything, and it has even more features than you can get on Poll Everywhere. So with that, that's the end of Adam's thing. The next thing I want to share, and I am so thrilled that Karen Menzing is in the room with us tonight, because I had this slide in here, and then I wrote and told her I was going to be talking about her, and she could come and talk about herself. So I shared this last, last time we had a mini geek fest. Um, because she was having their first ever technology night. And on that night, ASTE showed up to present her with the ASTE Teacher of the Year Award for 2012. So I am going to turn my mic over to Karen and have her share her site and some of the great things she's doing with her kids right now. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And can everybody hear me? Oh, maybe not. OK, great. Sorry about that. I'm new to Blackboard. Um, thank you so much. And the technology event, it was just such a huge shock. It's a huge honor when ASTE showed up at the end. I was totally blown away. And it was a wonderful event. It really went off well. It was very exciting. Um, so I thought I would just share a couple things that I've done with my classroom. I teach second grade in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it is a gifted class, but it's a regular public school. And the kids are still second graders, which I always like to remind people of and keep them in mind. And I just like to bring them into the 21st century in any way possible. So I'll start. I just updated my blog. Um, let me get the link really quick. Sorry, I just updated it um, right before this presentation to show you the non-digital Twitter chat we did last week. We've done a couple Twitter chats through the classroom, which were tons of fun. Um, but of course, these kids are seven, so they can't have their own Twitter account. So we've done some as a whole group using my account. But this way, I had them write out tweets. Um, following Twitter standards, and we, we put them up on a non-digital board. And it was really a lot of fun. And it really forced the kids to be concise with their writing. And they had to use a hashtag, at least one. And they had to tell something they had learned this year. And it was also really interesting to see what they chose. They basically had to write like one fact of something they would learn. And it was, it was just um, a really fun activity and, and got them into it. Um, so. The other Twitter thing I was going to show you was we the Twitter chat. So let me just pull that set up really quickly. And we haven't done one of these in too long, because they are so much fun. The kids love them. Um, but here's an example. It's something arranged with other teachers. And the ones we've done, they've been teachers all over the US and Canada. And it's like this one was name that toy, was the hashtag. And we had to give clues about toys. And the students guessed. And so we had things that we were giving clues about, and we were guessing other, other clues. And they just loved it. It was, it was such a great way for them to communicate um, and to think about giving clues. And what I do like about Twitter is um, that they really have to choose their words carefully. Yeah, we connected just by using the hashtag. And that's how I had it filtered. I, I used like um, tweet chat or something. I can't even remember which site, but one of those. So they weren't really seeing anything else. All they were seeing were, was a feed from, from this chat. And it was great. It was really tons of fun. And then let's see. 
Okay, so that's, that'll sum up my, my Twitter portion. Then the other thing I wanted to mention, just because it was so cool, was we earlier this year did a, a Google Plus Hangout, which I love everything Google, with a lady known as the Daring Librarian, who is just phenomenal. If you're not following her anywhere, you definitely should be, because her stuff is so cool. Here is the post she did. So we each did a blog post about our Hangout, which was just interesting to uh, compare. And basically, so we hung out with her, and she did this whole lesson with my class on using QR codes and embedded a slideshow and had them holding up um, devices to scan her QR codes to learn about them. And it was just amazing. I mean, it was she ran the whole lesson from Washington, D.C., and I just happened to be in the room watching. The kids were totally engaged. They were totally captivated. I mean, it was just a phenomenal lesson, and the kids were so excited about it. And I quickly realized anything that I um, in include QR codes with, they are suddenly so, so excited. So we came up with a really neat project a little bit after that. Um, I've had them use QR codes a couple times for spelling homework for reports for different things. Um, but this was one of our earlier projects that I blogged about that was um, Valentine's Day. They all made a traditional Valentine. And I found a really neat program to make the words go in a heart shape. So they had to write a letter, and they could give the Valentine to whoever they wanted. I think they all chose their parents. and. Then they also recorded a YouTube video with me, and we made it by link only, so their parents wouldn't find it in advance, and we created a QR code. They, they created the QR code. I mean, really, I, I put this on them. I want them doing the work. I want them doing the learning. So they wrote their message. They created a really short video. I told them to just kind of pretend they were um, leaving a voicemail. Like if they called their parents and they weren't there, like, tell me a voicemail of, you know, if you wanted to say Happy Valentine's Day, but they weren't home, because they got a little embarrassed. But it was it was really cute. And they then cut out their QR code and put it on their Valentine. And it was just so cute. The feedback I got from the parents was really positive, because it was just adorable. In fact, one mom was out of town, and she sent me the nicest note about how just seeing her, her little guy reading her this message was just made her Valentine's Day. So that was truly, um, I thought, one of our most fun projects. It was a great, great time. Kids loved it. Parents loved it. And let's see. I think the, I guess the one other thing I was going to mention is just YouTube in general, which I love using. Um, I always want to stress that I'm not just playing videos all day. By any means, I like to insert um, short clips, like short clips that will enhance a lesson, especially, well, I would say especially in science, but really it works with anything. Um, but I know a lot of schools do ban YouTube. I'm very lucky. I work in the Paradise Valley Unified School District. It's pretty progressive, and it is not blocked here. Although if you do work in a district where it is blocked, you can sign up for something called YouTube for Schools, and it will, if you go to YouTube dot com slash schools and it will um, kind of guide you through getting parts of it unblocked just for your school. It's really cool. So this was a really great article and I thought it was really great because I was mentioned in it, which was so exciting. But it was a really exciting article about just YouTube being um, more ed tech friendly and really trying to work with schools. You know, parents and, and really lots of people think of YouTube is just um, like silly cat videos or just completely inappropriate things, and it's not at all. There is so there's so many amazing YouTube sites out there that are just incredible for the classroom. Um, if you go, I'll put in my YouTube channel really quickly. I've got some, and I also another great feature of YouTube is you can create. Um, like playlists. So all the time I'm working on little playlists that I post for parents, I post for kids, or I can just go back to, if, you know, so I'm not fumbling through something. And, and I find, you know, my playlist of math songs or my playlist of um, you know, whatever we happen to be studying about, and it just makes it very easy. So that kind of sums up what I was going to talk about. But I, I love YouTube. I love QR codes. I love Twitter. I love I love bringing any technology into my classroom. And um, if it's free, it's even better. And I definitely like 
kids to be, I, I don't like the excuse the kids are too little, the kids can't do it. They absolutely can. I think if you set the bar high, they rise to it for sure. Um, did anybody have any questions about anything? Okay, I think everybody's just gone. Oh my goodness, Karen, you're a hard one to keep up with. Um, just amazing, amazing stuff. When do you sleep? <laughs> uh, well, I really don't. Sorry, this YouTube video is playing and it's totally distracting me. <laughs> Can't figure out how to get into stuff. Well, um, Karen, I hope um, yeah, we not see. A lot of sleep. I hope we see more of you at conferences um, because you just have a wealth of information to share. And as I'm sitting here, I'm writing down teachers that I, I want to get in contact with you to to start to. They're ready for that leap, but because I'm not in the classroom, I don't get to sit down and go over things with them. And I just think it's amazing. And as Peggy would say, now you all know why she's Arizona, or as she, Arizona Teacher of the Year. So, Karen, you rock the house. Thank you so much. Please don't leave. You probably have some other things you want to share with us later. Oh, thank okay. you so much. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Everybody, breathe in, breathe out. Okay. Now, um, we've got the next one. Is is there anybody else that would like to share? Kim Case, you always have something wonderful for us. Carolyn, Chad, Lynn, anybody have anything they'd like to share? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and if you would like to share, if you'll go up under participants, and you're going to see some icons there, and one of them is a hand that you can raise. And we're hoping one of you will raise your hand and have one for us to share. Okay. And this is where I do my one Mississippi. And we want Carolyn to share before she falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, I understand. Do you have one for us, Carolyn? We're kind of putting you on the spot here, aren't we? Okay, she's sharing here that I want to take the mic, but I want to tell you that I helped the teacher with Storybird with her kids. Don't you love Storybird? And it was, it is, it is awesome, Kim. Um, I've actually worked with a seventh grade gifted teacher there in our REACH program. These kids are at the 90th percentile and everything. They loved Storybird. So, and we're asking for your link to your blog, Carolyn, if we can. Yay! Okay. So, they did alligator allegoration stories. I'm not sure if I'm reading that right. So, thank you. And we'll put that into the links as well, Carolyn. Thank you. Alliteration. Thank you. It's yeah, obviously I need the coffee. Okay, guys, we want you to be thinking about something you want to share. I'm going to kind of go quickly for Jog the Web. Came across this, and it's what I like about it is you can create a slide of websites. And I'm sure many of you have seen stuff like this. Kim already knows about it. Yay. You register for account. They're easy to build. So let me go ahead and see if I can get over here. And I'm just going to take you to, it helps if you actually have the link, doesn't it? So let me get to the link there for you guys just to show you a little bit here. And hopefully it's going to come up. We've had kind of an iffy night. I'm not going to log in on this. And once again, some of you may have already used these. I had not before, and I was really fascinated that you can start to gather up the information. And you have them listed over here. You can have comments about them. And we can hear it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. In Arizona in the 90s, not really applying. But you can gather up websites for students, teachers, or whatever you use. And it's, it's, I guess it could be a live binder of sorts where we gather up the information. It's all in one site. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, guys, because I'm guessing the majority of you would absolutely understand this no matter what. So I'm going to go ahead and jog the web. The link is in there. And I'm going to take it back to the whiteboard here and go to the next one. And this, this next one is along the same page. It's create a playlist of your own. It's gathering up websites. And pretty simple stuff. I'm not even going to go in there because I'm guessing most of you have already worked with things like this. This one isn't as easy to, for me to do because I'm just starting to work with them. So if anybody has any suggestions or anything like that, love to have you share them tonight. Once again, as I said, I am just now working into this type of web or web 2.0 tool, and I think it's kind of cool. Okay, so again, that's MinterMob. Now, 
it's time for Harley with Peggy. And I probably caught her off guard. We've got Lynn's <laughs> hand up, so we'll get Lynn you next. Did. I was grabbing the link. Um, if you haven't discovered Furley, when I first heard about it, I thought it was just a way to shorten links, like tiny URL. But I discovered that it's much more than that. And so um, where you need to go is fur.ly. And what you do is you enter a series of URLs. And what I did, and um, I'm going to try to bring that link up in the um, web tour for you just so you can kind of see what that's like. Um, I put a bunch of links in, six of them actually, for Latia Cooper, who did the last Classroom 2.0 Live webinar that we had on STEM resources and live binders. And if you see that gold bar across the top, that's how Furley works. Each arrow that you click on will take you to the next URL that you saved in that one link. So I've got six sites just from her, and they're a little slow loading, so I'm not going to go through all of them. But I just wanted to see how cool that was that you can do all of that with just one link. Now, I did make a note there. It is free, but there were some annoying ads on there. So you might want to check it out before you share it with your kids just to make sure that it's appropriate for them. And the next thing I wanted to tell you about is Gorilla Scan. Now, this is really amazing. If you're using QR codes, and maybe if you uh, use them in a fairly permanent way, like having them up around your campus and wanting to send people to different places, maybe like a scavenger hunt, but maybe just to, as a way to find something. But you don't want to print all those. Uh, up and laminate them and put them around, only to find that you need to change the link on them and do it all again. Gorilla Scan does that for you. And you can um, scan your code once, and then you can go back in and change the place where that code it will take you to, and you don't have to print it out again. So it's a way of keeping your QR codes current. So I will add that link in the chat after we have some sharing from some others. Looks like Lynn's ready to share with us, Peg. Lynn, do you have your mic? Go ahead and click on talk, Lynn. I think you're all set. Not hearing you yet. I think he has to restart. Now, since you have two computers up, Lynn, can't you grab the one that didn't freeze on you? It's probably the one, the main one you're using, right? You'd have to come in as Ed Geek. Where's Lynn? And Lynn, you can't freeze in Arizona. It's in the 80s right now. OK, no mic on this side. OK, we'll come back. Once you get restarted, we'd love to have you come back and share with us, Lynn. Since we have this one up right now, is there anybody else that would like to share? Cindy? Yay, Kim Keys, yay, Kim, go for it. QR voice is the one that you mentioned earlier. And that is where you it's text to speech and then it creates um, a QR code and it's limited to you type it in, and you can type it in whichever language. Whichever language you type it in, it's going to read that text in that language. And it's limited to, I think, 100 characters. But then whatever you type in, um, when they scan it, it's going to read back whatever you typed in um, when that, whenever they scan that, that QR code. Um, what else I wanted to share was, let me go back and find it, was um, History Pen. You were talking about pen. I don't know if you've seen this before. 
you can kind of make pins um, throughout a map. And I thought that was pretty cool. Kim, do you mind if we bring it up in web tour? No, please do. I don't know if this is new to, to you or not. Wow. Um, but I thought it was cool. You can make channels and make different tours and stops throughout the way um, and put pictures and all kinds of things that you can make, um, like the Underground Railroad with different, uh, you know, just like a, a, you know, an actual tour that people might be going on. I'm sorry my dog is barking at the moment. Would this be something that you could let? fourth or fifth graders get them in on there and let them just play to learn it would you be safe would it be a safe thing to do Kim yes they can do that they can also explore some of the history pins that have already been created as well as create their own you can create it for your students as well as let your students create it um, there have been several that have already been created um, but there's a lot that you can do when you're creating these different history pins um, which is basically a map with different stops along the way. Um, with you can add in um, audio clips, speeches um, from the past, different pictures, old pictures that you might find, historical pictures, um, all kinds of different video clips. This would be great for some of the discovery um, images if you have access to some of the discovery or the old um, library archives, some of those kinds of things, historical archives, um, those types of things that you might want to add in. And I thought that was really cool. The, when you started to show this, I have to tell you, purely non-educational, but I'd love to do something like this for my mother's birthday. Um, the last three years of her life, the day of uh, her birthday, something in history, I think that would be kind of cool. So non-educational, but Ken, Ken, this just rocks. Thank you so much. We did put that link in the chat. So, okay, Lynn, you're ready to share now, right? How's, have you been able to get your mic to go? I think so. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. It's all yours, Lynn. Great. Uh, I just put a, a link in chat for TitanPad.com, and if you could bring that up on the web tour, it'd be great. Uh, this this is an editing software that's totally web based. I know that a lot of people have Google Docs, and you can do online editing with Google Docs, real time editing. But not everybody has that available in their districts. And if you can get to a URL and project it on a um, an interactive whiteboard, uh, you can use TitanPad. Many of you, well, some of you may have used it in the past, but it's a real-time editing. It doesn't require an email address, and it's something that if you have laptops out in the in the classroom and you want to edit something, everybody edit all together. It's a, it's a really cool little uh, app. Lynn, you caught me off guard there. I have used TitanPad in the past. In fact, at ASCII, we have used it for collaboration. And I love the idea that not everybody has Google. Not everybody's ready to go there. And your best bet is to start with the teachers, getting teaching them how they can use it for collaboration. So that is awesome. OK, thank you, Lynn. OK, anybody else before we head on? We'd love the sharing part, guys. OK. Chad, Cindy, hopefully we'll hear from you. Yay. It's time for educational websites for elementary parents. And Mrs. Douthart, I hope I'm saying that right, Peggy, take it away. I am not going to talk much about this, but I just wanted to share it because it is a fabulous slide binder. And she put this together just to uh, compile educational websites for elementary parents. So I'm going to drop that link in there for you, and you're going to want to spend some time exploring that on your own. Uh, and she has a lot of other great live binders, too. So remember that when you're in live binders, if you click on the author's name up there at the top that you can see at the top of this image, um, you'll be able to see all of the live binders that she's put on public shelves. And I would highly recommend that you do that, because there are really some great ones. The next 
thing I wanted to share with you, and I'll let Kim drop the link in for this. Um, just recently, Lorna Costantini and I, who are co hosts along with Kim Case on Classroom 2 Live, Lorna and I did this Moodle meet with uh, Learn Now BC, all about screencasting in the flipped classroom. And if you're at all interested in learning about the tools you can use and the ideas teachers have for doing screencasting with their kids, you should sign up for this Moodle Meet. It's already passed, but it's still active and live. You can access all of the resources totally free. And it will also take you to our um, uh, Scoop It that I created just for this Moodle Meet. And it's just been growing and growing for about six months now. So there are lots of resources there that you can explore. Um, if that's a topic you're interested in, and flipped classroom is definitely becoming a very hot topic these days, and lots more teachers are willing to give it a try without going all the way with it, but just trying it out. And the teachers, I think, that are especially having good results with it are those that are having their kids create some of the screencasts. So you'll find tools, tutorials, examples, lots of resources on that Moodle Meet. And Kim, this one's yours. OK, Peg, before we go there, the one thing and I'd like you to speak for just a minute about it. I don't know if we have anybody new to the show that does not know about your Classroom Live 2.0. Um, if you guys don't know about it, this, this show is in incredible. You have to be prepared, have a full cup of coffee, because you're going to sit down and you're going to learn so much and you just want to be completely aware. One of my favorite shows, inevitably on Saturdays, I am busy, but I do listen to the podcast while I'm walking my dog first thing in the morning. One of the greatest resources for what's going on, what's new, what's happening, and resources. And I even use it in the Madison School District for professional development. It's just top-notch stuff with great resources. So that commercial message brought to you by Kim Thomas. <laughs> OK, sorry about that. Side vibe. I'm not going to take you to the web website on this, guys, because I just don't feel like I'm as knowledgeable about it as I should be to, sh um, to really walk you through. This is just going to be one of those, thank you, Kim. Um, here, look at this. Um, you can go in and set up web pages for students. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more difficult upfront learning. But I have to tell you, as I said in the bottom bullet, if anybody knows Melody Brewer from Dysart, she is remarkable. And she attended our MICE meeting virtually a couple weeks ago. For those of you who don't know, in Madison, we work with, I have a group of teachers, MICE, Madison Integrating Computer Education. And we meet one Saturday a month. And Melody from Dysart Skyped in to join our meeting. Lynn has already come and been at one of our meetings. And Melody shared this. And that was good enough for me. But sadly, I, do not ha I haven't had the time to look at it. So if that's what you want, to do, check it out. I just think there, I think there's great, great possibilities. They do have the tutorials. You have to go from an activity to a vibe, and you really need to concentrate on what you're doing. So, hopefully, you'll try that out. My next one, another Melody Brewer recommendation. I absolutely think this one is incredible. It's free and. I don't know about you guys, but Ames is next week. And man, for the school district I'm at, it's all about bringing up those math scores. And is Arizona hitting safe harbor and all those other words that just make you shudder. 10 marks, you can sign up for free. You set up your accounts. And what I really like about it is, and you notice my group, it's Bob Hope and Harper Marks. I had to play around. You set up your students. They get their login. They go in. You can go in and pull number sense if you want to. And you assign it to the students. And the students can get a hint or a video. And if every time they take a hint or a video, it's recorded. So when you look at their results, you see how long they took, how many they got right, how many they got wrong, how many times they checked the hint, how many times they went to the video. Um, I assigned myself some math and did it. I miss doing math. And that's so, so sad. But I think it's. Um, it's really good. Now, Lynn, once, um, he also said that, are you talking when you say simple but to use but lack some features? If you're talking about 10 marks, I'm not sure you'd have to share that with us. What I don't like or I haven't figured out yet is how I can go in and preview what the students are going to be doing. So that's, that may be the fault of the program. It may be that I haven't invested all the time that I truly should. OK. Um, 
Lynn in the chat here is talking about another screencast tool called GoView. Got it in there. And let's see, do we have, Lynn, do you want to show that? Is there anybody that has anything they'd like to share? Greg? Okay, he's talking to Lynn, so yay, Greg. Okay, take the mic, sir. Greg, I don't know if you know the the talk button is underneath where it says towards the top audio. Oh, uh, there you go. There um, you go. It's been a while. I used to, I used to use Illuminate, and I haven't used it since it became Blackboard Collaborate. So great. I'm looking for the button. Um, yeah. No, I um, I, I see. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this tonight, and I'm just thinking, and not to try and promote what I do on my site because that's not why I'm here. Tonight. I'm here to pick up some ideas. But the problem is, I keep thinking back to my district where I'm trying to help. Uh, number of thousands of teachers uh, integrate technology and they're all just so busy. I mean you guys talk about the need to, to, to bring to test scores and, and we're throwing out all these great websites but for the majority of these teachers there's some of them work in two jobs uh, just to make ends meet and going home and searching the internet for, for hours to find these great sites or sit in a webinar is just too time consuming. Um, and that's why I formed it. I see that Peggy is throwing a shout out to my site. I, I, I think that we all have to decide at some point to just come together and, and say, you know what, let's all locate all of our ideas on one location so that when a teacher wants to know where to go to find the material, they know that they can go to this one starting point, i.e. sort of like a Facebook of education where people can form their own profile on their site, form their own group. and and shout out about whatever they want to talk about and get their 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 props that way. But having a central location that teachers know, go here and find it and, and give them something that, that will cut down on the hours of searching, the need to sit in, in a webinar from one site and then jump to another site and find out about another webinar and see if it lines up. Have everybody see what the common schedule is and say, hey, there's nothing going on at this time. I'm going to schedule my webinar there. Um, and that was the premise behind me starting technology integration education is that I, I'm not making any money from it. It's just kind of become a hobby and it's exploded. It's got 6,500 members as of tonight, 13,000 members on LinkedIn. Uh, people seem to be thinking the same way that we need to have a common place and we all just need to say, yeah, I mean Classroom 2.0 is what gave me the idea to start it. But I just didn't think that Classroom 2.0 had enough visuals for teachers to quickly come in and look and say, hey look, Edmodo is on this site. And how can I connect up with Edmodo and ask them the questions? I know, like you guys are talking about ten marks tonight. I mean, if ten marks is a group on the site, you'd know that hey, ten marks started this group. I can go in there and I can ask them the questions to to answer uh, my question on on something to do with their site. Uh, so that's why I, I you know I don't know I I can't say enough about whether it's my site, it's Classroom 2.0, it's someone that is going to have to at some point take the lead and say, let's make this a starting point where all educators go to get what they need to, to start and go off from there so that I know when I need some other thing, maybe I'm looking to do digital storytelling. And hey, look, there's the Glogster here on this site. But you know, I need some other resources. So uh, hey, look, Discovery Education, what's that? Oh, good, I got to tell my district about signing up for Discovery Education so I can have some videos to put in my blog. Or everything located in one central location. And, and people constantly keep coming back to that starting hub and going back out to these other great websites I think is essential. Um, so it's great that we're sharing these ideas tonight, but you know, I share them on my site, Peggy shares them on hers, Classroom 2.0 has it on theirs, and we're all triplicating, quadruplicating everything, and, and a teacher's coming across the same idea five or six times after searching hours instead of coming across it once in one central location. Greg, as I said in the chat there, I think we all agree with you. You're preaching to the choir, and that's the toughest yeah. part is with all the resources out there, how do we bring them together? And that's Peggy refers to this quite often, and she couldn't say it enough, but the PLNs. That is, that's where I go to my peeps. My PL, that's peeps. Learning network is what I would probably refer to it as. And 
it takes, like anything else, it takes a while to help build that with your teachers. Because you're right, they may not be able to go on a Monday night and be part of the webinar. They've got children. They're working on their masters. They're working on the national boards. They're working whatever. And the beauty of it is, and the frustration, that is our job. We need to share that with them. But it's always finding just that right time to find those resources which are going to fit in with them. It's a challenge, and I hope it doesn't go away. Because when it goes away, that means we're either at a stable pl or at a place about without any growth. So I'm getting on a soapbox, so I am going to quit it now. Greg, thank you so much for sharing. It's important what you said. Thank you. Okay, now, and Greg, you go ahead and turn your mic off if you haven't already. Thank you. And Peggy, um, recent Live Finder webinar. <laughs> I don't have to say one word about these slides because we had the real deal here. And mm -hmm. Mike Fisher was on at the beginning, if any of you happen to miss him. And he's already told us about both the Live Finder webinar that he did on the Common Core and uh, the next, uh, actually, he shared many of his resources there. So those are in the Live Finder. And you can check them out later. But it's just so funny. We're talking about PLNs. And I was just feeling so strongly about them that I put a whole slide in here about this tonight. And um, through the power of my own personal learning network, I was invited to do a webinar for the administrators in California on TCAL. And what I decided to do is something that's similar to what Greg was just talking about, which was to just pull together some resources for the administrators that would help them find free professional development for their teachers and for their colleagues that they could begin to explore. So I did a one-hour webinar on it. And as a result of doing that webinar, someone else saw it and asked me if I would come on and do a podcast with video via Google Hangout. And this is coming up in a couple of weeks. And it's on the Tightwad Teacher Podcast. If you haven't discovered that, you need to discover it because they're doing some really fun things. And I love the way they're starting to use these tools. So they connect on Google Hangout, but then they stream it out so others can enjoy it and, and uh, view it in a recording later. So that's my big shout out to my PLN. And coming up, in case you have not heard about this, this is going to be an awesome day of free professional development. The Social Learning Summit is um, going to be a new adventure that takes what used to be the Discovery Education Spring Conference and is bringing it together with Classroom 2.0. And this is, we're celebrating the fifth anniversary of Classroom 2.0. And so much has happened there since it first uh, was created by Steve Hargadon. But people are submitting their presentations 30 minutes in length. And there are, gosh, there may be 100 presentations already submitted. And so you just show up that day. And, and I'll be dropping that link in here, but it's also in the live binder. And choose the sessions you want to go to. But all of them will be recorded. So we're going to have another great repertoire of resources that we can explore on current topics related to technology and education. And so with that, do we have anyone else that would like to take the mic one more time? We have about one minute to go before wrap up. While we're waiting, Peg, I do want to send out a thanks to everyone. Once again, Peggy and I always start the show, and about five to six we go, oh, we don't know if somebody's going to show up. And every time we get people that came in with these great ideas, great things to share with us, that just going back to what Greg was saying, it's that true PLN where we walk away more knowledgeable. We know we've got other people out there that are doing the same thing we're doing. And it's just absolutely wonderful. So. 
I'm looking for raised hands. Don't see them as we do our exit here. Normally I would sing, but tonight only I will not do my um, happy trail song to you. A special thanks to everyone who participated and shared. Obviously, we're thankful to the Blackboard Illuminate. Uh, sorry, back Blackboard Collaborate, it must be time to go, and ASCII, and the TIS group, and you can get a professional development certificate for this. You just need to be sure to send your request in at the link provided here. Our next show will be May 14th. But before you go, we want to talk to you or just share with you some of the ways you can join the fun. I'm going to go through this kind of quickly just due to the fact that it is 7 o'clock and after. But most importantly, we want to encourage all of you who are participating tonight to consider joining us for the Virtual Technology Conference, the WOW Conference, the Way Out West Virtual Technology Conference, Saturday, May 5th. And Peggy and I are doing a smackdown from 1 until 2. We did one last year and had a glorious time. The time just flew by. We are focusing on STEM resources, so please, please consider joining us for the entire conference. But to be selfish, we really would like you guys to consider joining us for the smackdown that day. And there is a link that will be available. You can go ahead, a Google form, fill out what you'd like to share with us, and then you'll be doing a slide ahead of time and getting it into us. Peggy, I know I'm going kind of fast. Is there anything you want to add in in regards to the um, steam, steaming ahead with Common Core conference? I think you've done a great job of covering it, and the the site will be live in the next couple of days, so uh, it's all hosted on Moodle. So. We'll be giving you all of the information you need there, and we'll be sending that out. And I will post that in our live binder later. But you've got it covered, and I would love to have you guys come and bring a link to share in the SmackDown. And the whole thing is free. The entire day is free. It's all done in Blackboard Collaborate. So once you join the Moodle, you'll have access to all of the links. So we'd love to see you. Great. OK. And once again, Join us next month, grow your own PLN, be part of our PLN. We appreciate it, and I think it's time to call it a night. And will the SmackDown be free? Yes, it's always free because we're tight ones, just like Peggy's <laughs> podcast. We love it. Happy trails, everyone, and thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>